Hello. Uh, he's got to fill up his watering cans. And I'll be with you in a minute. It's very, very important that uh, you make sure you water the plants in the polytunnel even more than the water plants on the vegetable garden because it doesn't rain in here. Um, tomatoes particularly like a lot of water because if they don't have it, they get split and then they're pretty nasty. So for each of these two plants, I give one of these um, possibly twice a day. Uh, and soak all of the ground. And here's the hotbed we made the other day. See the grass is all drying out and it's getting nice and warm and hot for this courgette to grow here. And these squashes that we planted the other day, uh, they need a good soaking as well. I'll give each one one of these. There's some creature has gnawed into the bottom of the stem here, can you see? I mean, half of it's still all right. I think it's okay, it's not wilted or anything. So I'm gonna just have to support it a bit with some string. Uh, it's a very gentle, quick little granny knot. I'm not gonna have to get my nice white string that I like, so these horrible, frayed, nasty stuff. It's very difficult to tie knots with. See what I mean? Uh, so there, I've used two to stabilise it. I just hope that's all right. So today I went looking in some markets for these things rather than garden centres. And look how much better the quality is in proper markets rather than these tacky garden centres. We are able to get some courgette, yellow and green, really healthy ones. Um, lots of uh, little flowers coming. Um, as you can see right down there. Yeah. So they need to go in. I haven't got room for the polytunnel for them. They can go out. They'll be fine outside. Um, they've got aubergines. Yes. Uh, so they're going to go in the polytunnel. They're very, not very hardy things at all. They need to go in the polytunnel. And then we've got cucumbers. Now, apparently these are a different type of cucumber to ones I've grown before, and they're really massive, and they need support. Because when I've grown cucumbers before, they've been little flimsy things, and I've grown them up the tomatoes to space save, you know? But he says these will pull the tomatoes down and need to build a strong framework for them. So I've got to really think about what to do for those. And they've got to go in the body tunnel. Then I've got some hardy fuchsias with big flowers. They're uh, not for the vegetable garden, of course, they're for the garden. Go over there. And some parsley, which is just an annual, but it's um, good to have one. And then there's coriander, which is also an annual, but they can go in a little row in the vegetable garden. And if you just cut down and use these flowering stems, then they carry on going. It's once they flower, they die, you see. Very good herb coriander. Uh, got two of them, three of them. And then I've got a clump of sage, uh, which could go somewhere. But useful herb sage. Right, so I've got this much space left, and now I've got to work out where these are going to go. Right, this is uh, not my usual nice string that I can break with my hands, but it is biodegradable, it's all we could get. So, tying up uh, tomato plants, um, really, you grow them up as thick and you cut out the little side shoots as they grow, because you only want one shoot. When they reach the top, you can unhook them, trail them across the ground, carve the next one, or you can just grow another side shoot up, but they usually don't reach the top in um, our miserable short summers. And so a little node here on the bamboo can sometimes like a little thing like that. So you can anchor the string to it. Um, tie a little granny knot, one's this way, one in the other way, and then sort of get it so it's sort of straight. And then do the same one way round and then the other one under just a granny knot and then they're sort of straight and then when they get a bit bigger you add another one all right so now over here i have done a bit more hotbed here 
for these cucumbers. Now the man in the shop said they need lots of support so at the moment we just put this bamboo canes and maybe we'll sort of strengthen it and reinforce it somehow. And over here, these two beautiful aubergine plants. Makes a bit of a squeeze with these but okay we've got to be a bit creative here so they're going to be a bit in the shade of them but they should be okay. Uh, I'm so pleased they've got aubergines because I use a lot of these. Runner beans in here. Uh, these skanky little things stick off in the garden centre and they look really skanky, but hopefully they'll recover and they'll be like a first generation. And then it's still not too late to plant uh, runner beans now because they come in sort of late summer, autumn, so that should be fine. And then they can come up as a second generation. So uh, now I've got to like, measure out my, my um, where they're going to go. So I use some of these. So one by two trenches filled with manure. Um, and then have the sticks going together. You could do them like a kind of wigwam, but I don't like that little narrow to the top a bit. So I'm going to do like a, a long one along the top and then lots of uh, zigzaggy bits coming to it. So what I do is like a, I'm measuring out where they're going to go because the squashes don't mind a bit of shade because they grow along the ground and the runner beans go up. So if you go to like here somewhere, so then if I measure one trench to go about there and uh, and then this one over the bit here, um, just make sure that works. Yeah, they come across the top like that. So I measure that there. And now I just need a trench dug here. Oh, I need two trenches. And now um, all I need is some manure. Right, uh, this manure is actually fresh from the goose shed and it's really, really hot. <laughs> uh, spit it out, like so, and then take the soil back on. Use your shovel if you want. Uh, right, should do. And now, uh, right, these are uh, bit top down, but they'll be all right. Uh, just gently. Don't need to squeeze them apart. Uh, like so. Uh, there we go. Uh, this Darius. Uh, right. Now. There's about half of them, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six. There's three on each side, so they can fit over there for a bit. Now where did I put the trench? Here, right. Okay. So when uh, And they're not actually touching the manure, they're just above it. So let their roots decide where they want to go. One there. And then Gently unthread them and untangle them. Just, just keep wiggling your fingers like that. Eventually they let go of each other. See that one's twisted round. Uh, and one, two, and three. And where did I put my seeds? Over here. And the seeds will go, I mean, hey Darius. Uh, let's see what it says on here. Uh, two inches deep, so that's uh, five centimeters. Uh, 
painted lady there. They got uh, flowers which are white and red. There's quite a lot of different types of these. And they're quite good for doing pulse crops from them. The cats aren't supposed to go up there, but they always do, so it's inevitable. And there. So that's one side done. And I'll save these ones for the other side. Oops. Right. Now I'm just going to undo this side now. Right. So I guess that should be deeper now. Put the last of the in here like this. And just cover it over like that. So I'm going to use 8 foot bamboo canes. I would use 12 foot bamboo canes if I could, but it's so difficult to get them nowadays. We are growing our own bamboo, but I guess it would take quite a long time before that's ready. So, take these off. You want them sort of like coming in so they meet the other one. So we line them up um, uh, and in the ground like that. So I'm going to use this another six foot bamboo for this, it's only six foot long. And it's going to like sort of thread it through to start with. Like so, each one uh, have it sort of just balanced there like that. Right, so now a fiddly bit. Uh, it's good to sort of attach things to these nodes because then it just slightly to slip. So kind of tie it over one side of the node with a tooth liney knot thing. And because they do have a tendency of slipping and sliding as the beans grow. And you might need to reinforce them as well if the beans get really heavy. So the other side of the nodes do a little couple of knots there to anchor it on and then I'm gonna like tie it onto this. Uh, might need a bit more string. Uh, to add string together just do like this one knot. So, and it's really strong. Um, right. So wrap it all round. And tie it on. And then double granny knot thing. And then, of course, give them that all important water. At least two cans for each side, I'd say. So, run of beans naturally climb, but when they're in this kind of state, they need a bit of help. So, just attach the string to a node like this one with a granny knot, one under this way one under that way and then tie it together with um and put both of them up there with a, like a loop and, and support it's really support more than anything um so you don't want to squash the stems you nice nice big loop 
um, like so. And uh, we'll do another one for those other bits. Um, I guess that's for this one as well. That are snapped or broken, just uh, take them off. The broad beans of runner beans, sorry, are very good at producing side shoots uh, and tangling around things as well. together lined up. One knot like that, put them both in it like that. Really, really strong. Um, oops. Uh, I'll attach this bit to that bit. Uh, and then a little bit there. I'll cut a spot so it doesn't cut in there. And uh, that one better. And that way. This way, uh, that one, hmm. just sort of anchor it around that way, and around that way it should, just, got, just support really, and then have it all fairly loose, but just tie it up in a nice loose loop like that, and that should sort itself out. Right, now I've just got to think of somewhere to plant these coriander in these, uh, these um, courgettes and these things and that's really it for today I think so like and subscribe and I'll see you next time